Good morning, everyone. Today is new shock day. I've got a Fox DPX2 on both my Mojo 3 and on my Ritmo. So today we're gonna go through how to set the DPX2 up and how do I like it? First thing we're gonna do is set our sag. The Ritmo uses 14 millimeters of sag. So get a friend to help if you can. Otherwise, if you don't have any friends, find a friendly tree. Get on your bike. Make sure you're dressed properly for riding with your backpack. Move that O-ring forwards. Give it a little bounce to jiggle it free. Pop it back forwards again. Assume your natural riding position. And boom, carefully get off. You can now see how much sag your shock currently has and you'll need to adjust the air pressure to get it to that 14 millimeter spot. So we got 170 PSI in here. I need to air up a little bit. I'll try 185 PSI. With our air spring adjustment, we're gonna try this a second time. I think that's pretty good. Let's hop off. Okay, how are we looking? 14 millimeters, spot on. Bike number two, the Mojo 3. We're looking for 12 millimeters of sag. Slam that O-ring forwards. Okay, that's pretty good. We're close, we're at around 17 millimeters of sag. We need to get to 12 millimeters, so I need to add some air pressure to make things a little bit firmer. All right, jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Break through the stiction. Slam that thing forwards. Let's see what we got. All right, 12 millimeters of sag. Let's set the rebound, and then we can start to drop in and get into the compression and volume reduction settings. Let's do it. To set the rebound damping, I found a curb-sized drop-off that I can ride down while seated. Now, if I get bucked off the saddle, that means the rebound's too fast, and I want to set it basically as fast as I can have it without getting bucked off the saddle. Let's try it a couple times. So if you look closely, you'll see that the rebound was set fast enough that I got bucked off the saddle. That means I need to slow the rebound damping down a little bit. Now, how much should I change it to make the bike ride how I need it to? Great question. In order to adjust your damping correctly, the trick is to use bracketing. This means double your adjustments. Instead of making two turns, make four turns of adjustment, or in this case, make eight turns instead of four turns. If your initial adjustment of eight turns additional damping is too much, then split the difference and back it off four to be in the middle of those two sets. Settings. Continue this process until you're down to just the exact perfect setting that you need. Now that we've set our sag and our rebound damping, let's get on the trail and adjust our low speed compression and see if we need to add or remove volume reducers. Let's do it. This drop's about a medium-sized obstacle for the trails here in town. There's much bigger drops and plenty of smaller ones. One of the key things we're gonna check for on this shock is how easily it bottoms out. And as you can see, this O-ring is at the very end of the shaft, so we've gotta add a little bit more volume reduction with the reducing spacers. Volume reducers are simple plastic spacers that clip onto the shaft of the shock. They work to make a big change in how progressive the shock is. The Mojo 3 didn't quite bottom out, so I'm not gonna mess with the volume reducers in that shock. I already put a 0.8 volume reducer in the Mojo 3 anyhow. I have a link in the description below to Jensen USA where you can get some volume reducers. Now, time to adjust the low speed compression. Low speed compression will be noticeable in three general situations. Pedaling efficiency, it'll control if your bike bobs or not. It'll be noticeable in cornering, if you have too much low speed compression, you won't hook up in the corners and you're just gonna go into a drift right away. And number three, too little low speed compression means your suspension is just gonna cycle and you won't generate forward momentum as you're pumping your way down the trail. I'm far more concerned about traction in corners and about resistance when pumping than I am about pedaling efficiency. And I designed my suspension setup around that. When I'm setting up my low speed compression, I'll use bracketing to determine what too much low speed compression is and what too little feels like then I'll find the sweet spot. To adjust your low speed compression, you're gonna need a three millimeter Allen key. There's 12 possible clicks of low speed compression on the DPXT shot. Now, 
Now that I have both of these DPX2 shocks dialed in, I'm gonna try them out for a little bit and I'll be doing a review video pretty soon here. If you're thinking about a new rear shock, the DPX2 is a great option. The guys at Jensen USA have them in stock. I have a link in the description below straight to Jensen. If you have additional setup questions, you can always call Jensen and they can point you in the right direction. Now let me know in the comments below, if you have a DPX2, how did you get it? Did you buy it aftermarket from a shop like Jensen? Or did it come OEM from a manufacturer like Ibis or Santa Cruz or any of the other guys out there? If you like this video, do me a favor, share it to your friends on Facebook.